This video is brought to you by Card Kingdom. And while supplies last, if you mention Saffron Olive in your order notes, we'll hook you up with a free Saffron Olive sticker with any Card Kingdom order. Hello, everyone. It's Seth. Probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Much Brew About Nothing. So last week, we didn't have instant deck tags because we have been doing daily spoilers for Throne of Eldraine, which means we kind of get a free-for-all, and I decided to play a deck that people have been asking me to play for a while, and I've been wanting to play for a while, and that is Modern Slivers. Slivers with some sweet new Modern Horizons edition. So this build mostly comes from one of our infamous small Japanese tournaments, Yamazaki Yasuki, but I made a couple of small changes, but really, uh, it's basically the build that Yakazuki played. So congrats to Yakazuki on a really sweet deck, and like usual, gonna do a quick deck tech, let you know what the deck's all about, but really, it shouldn't be too hard. It's basically playing slivers, playing more slivers, playing more slivers, attacking with slivers, hoping that that's enough to win the game, and then we'll jump into the gameplay, see how it actually works. Anyway, a quick reminder before we break down slivers for modern. If you enjoy this deck and you enjoy Much of Brew in general, it would be awesome of you. If you could take a second, click that subscribe button down at the bottom of your screen. It's a great way to support the channel and the site for free. So let's talk slivers, starting with really the competitive advantage of slivers. And we've talked about this before with tribes. What do they do better than anything else? And with slivers, it's really that every single sliver in our deck gives every other sliver an ability. So in a sense, every single creature in our deck is a lord of some kind, but probably the most important slivers are our actual lords. Slivers that give all of our slivers plus one, plus one. So here we have three different options. Predatory sliver, sinew sliver, two drops, all slivers get plus one, plus one. They look like one ones, but they actually pump themselves because they pump all slivers. So they're actually two twos for two that are also pumping all of our other slivers. Sedge sliver, a little bit weird. It's based on an old alpha card sedge troll, but it's a lord as long as we have a swamp, and it's even an upgraded lord, because if we have a swamp, we're not only giving all of our slivers plus one plus one, but we can pay a black mana to regenerate any of our slivers, so fighting through lightning bolts and wraths and uh, all the removal that our opponent can throw at us. So these cards are kind of the core of the deck. Then we have our explosive evasive sliver. So beyond our lords pumping our team, our next most important slivers are Cloud Shredder sliver and also Gale Rider sliver, which is basically bad Cloud Shredder for the most part. Cloud Shredder, though, one of the new Modern Horizons editions, and this card is absurd in our deck. It is so, so good. It's a two drop. It's a one, one. It gives all of our slivers flying and haste. And this card allows for ridiculously explosive turns. Turns where out of nowhere, we just kind of play a bunch of slivers along with Cloud Shredder, swing in. We got a bunch of lords, hit our opponent for like 15 or 20 damage out of the blue, win the game by surprise. So that's the power of Cloud Shredder is stealing games. Gale Rider, just flying, no haste hit it on, but it's a one drop. It's a flying man that gives all of our slivers flying. Still a really powerful guard. Could you imagine like a one mana elf or merfolk that just gave all elves or merfolks flying? It would be insane. And Gale Rider Silver is still very decent. Beyond our lords and our explosive, let's say, slivers, we have our protection slivers. So first, we cheat a little bit. Unsettled Mariner, technically a sliver, but really a shapeshifter. Just makes it so anything that targets us or our creatures costs one more mana or it gets countered. So this makes it a little harder for our opponent to pick apart our team with lightning bolts and path to exiles. And then Dredgescape Sliver, essentially another form of protection but in a weird way. It gives all of our slivers unearth two. So if our slivers die in the early game, eventually we can pay two mana, get them back with haste, smash our opponent, hopefully use that hasty from the graveyard sliver value to close out the game. Then we have a bunch of just one of mess with combat slivers, I guess is what I would call them. A striking sliver, everything is first strike, really good in creature matchups, making it hard for our opponent to block our stuff, or we can put a wall of slivers on defense, put like all of our team with first strike in front of a big death shadow or something and take it down. Leeching sliver, kind of this weird cheap hell rider esque sliver. Whenever we attack, we need to drain our opponent. Good for getting through board stalls. Speaking of getting through board stalls, spiteful sliver, also great there. We're not going super janky with like blasphemous axe or anything, but it's basically a stuffy doll sliver. So whenever any of our slivers take damage, we get to deal that much damage to a player or planeswalker. So if we have a bunch of slivers, our opponent has a bunch of blockers, we swing into them. If our opponent doesn't block, they probably die to damage. If they do block, they probably die to spiteful sliver damage. And then
then Siphon Sliffer just gives everything lifelink, good at winning races, especially against like Bird and other aggro decks. We also have one copy of the first Sliver, was not in the original infamous small Japanese tournament deck. I just like first Sliver, so I threw it in. It's probably not optimal. I don't know. It, it seems really sweet, so we're going to try it. Just a one-up on the top end of our curve. Cascading Sliver into Sliver into Sliver. Seems pretty busted. It was good when I played on Commander Clash, at least, so we'll see how it actually does in Modern. Then we have our non-Sliver support cards. Here we essentially have two weird ramp cards. Also, Collector Company, kind of a card advantage card. Ether Vial, hopefully you play it on turn one. Take it up, put Slivers into play for free each turn, letting us play multiple Slivers in a turn, speeding up the deck, and then Collected Company kind of cheats on mana. Four mana can grab up to six mana worth of creatures, uh, so kind of a ramp spell in a weird way, but also card advantage, grabbing two creatures with one card. So with this, we could potentially hit, like, Haste Sliver Lord and win the game, or some weird combat messing Slivers, like Spiteful Sliver, to ruin our opponent's plan when they attack us with big stuff, or just cast it for value, grab a couple Lords, proceed with our game plan. Removal-wise, a single copy of Dismember. Not removal heavy, but just a tiny hedge. As far as the mana base, we get a few sweet lads. Mutavolt, it's a sliver, so another way to benefit from all of our sliver synergies. Sliver Hive fixes our mana and in the late game lets us make slivers for five mana. Cavern of Souls, another five color land, good against counter spell decks. Some fetch lands, some basic lands, a bunch of shock lands in Urborg. In the sideboard, and this is one thing about this build of slivers that I'm a little sketchy on, it is all slivers. 100% sliver sideboard. So we have a bunch of protection slivers. Diffusion sliver basically makes all of our slivers into frost titans essentially. If our opponent tries to kill him, gotta pay two more mana so good in removal heavy matchups frenetic sliver this is a weird one basically we can pay zero flip a coin if we win the flip we flicker wisp our sliver essentially exile it put it back into play end of turn if we lose the flip we have to sacrifice it so how this plays in practice is let's say our opponent goes to path to exile one of our slivers if we have frenetic sliver out we can flip a coin and we have a 50 50 chance of saving our sliver from the removal spell if we lose we lose it anyway so it's not guaranteed protection but kind of like random potential protection then another dredgescape sliver again sort of protection getting our stuff back from the graveyard a bunch of just random combat slivers another leeching sliver two-headed sliver to give our slivers menace venom sliver good at letting our little slivers take down big creatures thanks to death touch another spiteful sliver if there's a big creature matchup siphon sliver lava belly sliver gives ways to gain life against decks like burn harmonic sliver gonna wreck decks like Urza or Affinity or Hardened Scales, anything with artifacts or enchantments. We just blow them up, blow them up, blow them up whenever a sliver comes into play. And that is Slivers, Modern Horizon Edition of Slivers for Modern. And that's our bunch of brew deck for this week. So let's jump into the gameplay, see if Slivers and Modern can actually compete thanks to some sweet new Modern Horizons editions. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoy it. And I will talk to you soon. All right. Much brew about nothing time. We are playing Sliver Tribal <laughs> in modern. Slivers, slivers all the time. And that sounds fine. We don't have an ether vial, but we have some slivers. Hopefully we hit a lord or something. We have our one dismember. I mean, yeah, whatever. This this should work. Uh so Cavern of Souls. I think we're gonna name Sliver. And we will play a uh let's play Gale Rider, actually. Well, Let's play Striking Sliver. We have two Flying Slivers. So I think we're fine to run out Striking Sliver here. Opponent. Bloodstained Mire. Cracks it. Blood Crypt. Down to 17. And Inquisition of Kuzilek. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, there goes our Cloud Shredder, I assume. Ren and Six seems brutal. Ren and Six seems super, super good against our 1-1s one -ones at the moment. Lord. Sliver Lord. Wandery Grave. Well, Mutavault. Uh, Gale Rider Sliver. Go to combat. Get in with Striking Sliver. Hit our opponent. Down to 16. We gotta be the aggro. We gotta draw lords. That land was not what we were hoping for. Opponent. No run in six. No run in six. Vern Catacombs. And. Passes. Ooh. Hmm. I think we wait. I think we play Vern Catacombs. We go to combat. We attack. We're not going to fire at Mutavault. We're not going to Sedge Sliver. We're just going to hit for two. Next turn, we can Sedge Sliver and leave up Regeneration. Oh, okay. Well, it kills our Flying Sliver. We get a Swamp. Hit our opponent. Well, in that case, we will Crack Catacombs. Get a Forest. Play Sedge Sliver. 
Well, now we get to Sedge Sliver and leave up regeneration. Pass the turn. All right, the slivers are coming, opponent. The slivers are coming. What can you do? What can you do? Sledge Sliver was a really good draw. The regeneration seems very helpful here. Black Cleave Cliffs for our opponent. And Liliana. Yep. Takes down. Well, we saw Sack Striking Sliver. Opponent. Passes. We draw. Sliver. Ugh. Not the best time for Vile. Well, we will fire up Mutavault. Go to combat. Hit our opponent down to eight. Watery Grave. Untapped. Pass the turn. Oh, that would have been a good turn to draw a sliver. Opponent, untaps. Can we close out the game? Opponent, scoops it up. Slivers, take it down, Jund. It was enough, it was enough, it was, a ooh. <laughs> Frenetic sliver, eh? <laughs> ooh, all right, how do we want to fight against Jund? That is the question. Um, I think the answer is diffusion slivers seem helpful just to fight through removal. Also kind of shuts down Ren and Six, or at least makes it expensive to Ren and Six our stuff. I think we're going to go down Striking Sliver. Uh, not a big fan of Slivers that die to Ren and Six in this matchup. I mean, we're going to have to play some of them, but I think we have to minimize our exposure to Ren and Six if we can. Lava Belly, Harmonic. Dredgecape seems good. Just another way to get Slivers back from the graveyard once our opponent kills them. Uh, and maybe this is one where you gotta cut first Sliver. All right, go down first Sliver, sadly. Run it like that. Well, we got there. Being aggro was enough in game one. We didn't even hit a Lord immediately. Ooh, this hand I like. We have Aether Vial. We have a really solid Sliver Curve. This seems pretty reasonable. Bloodstained Mire for our opponent. If our opponent takes our Aether Vial, then we get to start curving out if they don't take our ether vial there's the inquisition then we just ether vial and go that direction collected company seems pretty good in this matchup that's a card we would like to draw as the game goes along opponent takes sliver lord okay and passes well cavern on sliver and we will just ether vial pass the turn opponent verdant catacombs cracks it stomping grounds untapped down to 16 and scavenging use all right that's a thing well, take up Aether Vial, play Verdant Catacombs, crack Verdant Catacombs, grab a Swamp, Sinew Sliver, Sliver Lord Part 1, pass the turn. Would still like to hit Collected Company. Two Slivers for the price of one, seems good. Dreadscape looking a little more sketchy with Scavenging Ooze running about. Wooded Foothills for our opponent. Combat attacks. Yup. Well, we take it. Ooh, opponent's even gonna eat. Okay. Grows the ooze, hits us. Sure. Down to 16. Well, vial in Gale Rider. Yup. Untap. Take up our vial to two. Come on, sliver, please. Ooh, that is a sliver. Well, we will play Sliver Hive. We will play Siphon Sliver. We will play Cloud Shredder Sliver. Opponent probably has a removal spell, but go to combat. Attack. Whoa, no removal? Opponent down to eight, we go to 25? Ho! Oh, okay, opponent untaps. Wow, that was a good turn. No removal, and opponent scoops it up, and John cannot keep up with the Slivers. Ho! Oh, that was a dominating performance. Whoa! The Power of Cloud Shredder, one of our new Modern Horizons editions. Wow! That was five extra damage out of nowhere, and our opponent is scooping the game. I don't even feel like those were insane sliver draws, and we just stomped Jund. Stomped him! Stomped him, stomped him! Well, uh, sweet, sweet, sweet! Alright, much brew about nothing time. We are slivering <laughs> in modern, and eh, okay, only two lands, but that means lots of action. We got an Aether Vial and a Coco. A little bit of a non boba but that's fine. We got enough creatures in this deck that hopefully we can make it work, but this is fine. One drop, two drop, three drop, also Vial. Yeah, see what our opponent's doing. Wooded Foothills, opponent passes. Well, Cavern on Sliver, and Aether Vial. Pass the turn. Opponent cracks wooded foils. Breeding pool tapped. Bloodstained mire cracks it. Why is our opponent playing? That's four colors. Oh, it's dredge. All right. 
Dredging, dredging. Oh my god. Narc amoeba. Well, we're gonna have to be fast and furious. That's our hope. That's a really good dredge start, though. Opponent gets double prized amalgam. We do not have much graveyard hate in this deck. Yep. So opponent's got the big old board. We untap. We take up Ether Vial to one. Another Coco, but we're a ways away from casting it. Well, crack catacombs. Hmm. Take a forest. Ugh. Play Leeching Sliver. Yeah, opponent might just have too fast of a start here on the play. We're taking a huge amount of damage. Opponent untaps. Dredges. Conflagrate. Also bad for us. Whoo! Well, that's about as good of a start as you can get in dredge these days. <laughs> Double cathartic reunion. Our opponent has dredged essentially their entire deck here. They've dredged, yeah, 37 cards uh, deep on turn turn three here. Okay, yeah. Uh, well, we can't beat that start. Good news is, I don't think there's a deck in modern that's going to beat that start, so we are not alone. Bad news is. We do not actually have Graveyard Hate in this deck. So our hope is to race our opponent. And I don't know... Don't know how realistic that is. We'll see. We're gonna find out. Uh, gonna have to cut our first sliver again. I don't think this is the matchup for it. Bring in Diffusion Slivers to protect against Conflagrate. Go down Dismember. Spiteful Sliver isn't that great here. Maybe another Siphon Sliver can swing the race in our favor. Going down... Let's go down one Gale Rider. Try it like that. Well, all right. That was Dredge doing Dredge to the max. It's still a thing. Graveyard Hate is still something you need to play in modern. And uh, with the all sliver sideboard plan, <laughs> we don't have any. Maybe we should. This is a infamous small Japanese tournament deck. I don't know about these frenetic slivers. All right. We're on the play, which is good. Well, okay. We're going to keep this. This hand is mostly counting on our mana wef sliver to let us accelerate. Land go. Opponent. Breeding pool. Untap down to 18. And Hedron Crab to get the milling started. Well, we will. Overgrown tomb. Untapped. Play mana wef sliver. Get in for one. Hit our opponent down to 17. Pass the turn. Opponent, Hedron Crab, oh my lord, here comes the mills. Do they have a fetch land? They oh, just a normal land, Blood Crypt, untapped, or tapped rather. All right, mill six, hits a Narc Amoeba. Mills to Cathartic Reunions. All right, still no Dredger in the graveyard is good. Opponent, passes. Well, Cavern on Sliver. So I think we, let's see, white, red, play Cloud Shredder Sliver. White, Red, or whatever, play Sinew Sliver, go to combat, hit our opponent, down to 13, alright, pass the turn, opponent untaps, loams back some lands, okay, and here comes the milling of all mills, opponent gets to mill 12, there's Conflagrate, and a Stinkweed, cracks it, Steam Vents, untap down to 10, mills, Narcomoeba Creeping Chill, that's what we wanted to not see. Ugh. Yeah, that's that's not good. All right, opponent. Yeah, this leaves us a tiny bit short of having lethal here, I think. Opponent. Passes. Ether Vial, not super helpful. We'll play Vernon Catacombs. Run out. Sedge Sliver. Go to combat. Attack with everything. Opponent. Cycles Forgotten Cave. Dredges. Narcomoeba Creeping Chill. Good God. Oh, well, Double Hedron Crab is, that's a lot. That is a lot. Opponent. Up to 16. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Well, I gotta say, dredges looked really impressive. Uh, they lose Faithless Looting, and our opponent has managed to dredge 40-ish cards by turn three, uh, both games. And if you don't play Graveyard Hate, you're not going to beat Dredge. You mostly hope to dodge Dredge if you're the deck not playing Graveyard Hate. Opponent, blocks. Sure. Um, I believe this means we are dead. We'll pass the turn. Opponent goes to four. I believe we're dead to Conflagrate here. Opponent hits their last Narc Amoeba. Opponent did also Dredge pretty well, I will say. They hit all four Narc Amoebas. They did Dredge a lot of their deck, so part of it's just that they managed to Dredge a lot. But they also... Did a good job hitting Creeping Chills and uh, Narc Amoebas to stay alive. So opponent has seven cards in hand. 
They attack. They life from the loam. They conflagrate. I think that leaves us dead, right? I guess maybe they can put us to one. They can also just wrath our board, which is also not good. There's the loam. Gets back a bunch of lands. They could also just play... They can play a land, crack a land, mill 12 more cards, which should hit another Creeping Chill, and then we're definitely dead. All right, opponent plays a Gemstone Mine. Here's the milling. Creeping Chill kills us. No chill there. Well, no chill there. Not dead yet. I still don't feel like we're very alive. So opponent, Bloodgast, comes back. Prized Amalgam will be coming back. The bad news is, because our opponent has all these Narc Amoebas, even if we survive the turn, they can chump block and then kill us. So I don't think we can assemble lethal through this Conflagrate, even if, uh, even if our opponent can't quite kill us this turn, which I think is what it's looking like since they didn't hit Creeping Chill. All right, opponent, what's your, what's your plan? What's your plan? We actually had a pretty good start. Like, our start was really good. We would have killed a, a deck without... A million chump blockers and gaining six life, uh, I think, with this hand pretty easily in the air. Evasively, even. Sadly, Dredge is not that deck. Yeah, this deck probably needs a little bit of graveyard hate in the sideboard. All right, about it. <laughs> They're really, really tanky on this decision. Apparently, this is a, a tough one. I mean, you conflagrate something. I assume it's our board, but maybe I'm wrong. We can only regenerate one sliver. All right, here comes the Conflagrate. Going face. Oh, yeah, this works as well. Because then that gives the, the blood gas taste and we die. Yup, no removal spell. Just an ether vial. And we scoop it up. Well, that was rough. All right, much brew about nothing time. We are, hmm, losing some die rolls with, uh, with slivers in modern. And uh, we'll keep this. No vials, no cocos, but we got slivers. See what our opponent's doing. Opponent, Bloodstained Mire. Cracks Bloodstained Mire. Blood Crypt. All right, looks like Jund Thoughtseize. Well, our opponents put themselves to 15. On the other hand, if our opponent has Ren and Six, life is pretty bad. Ren and Six is the destroyer of our hand. Opponent passes. Well, I mean, Cavern, Sliver, Gale Rider. Not feeling good about this, though, because of Red and Six. Yeah, right or go. Uh, opponent. Green mana. Cracks it. Yeah, this feels like a Red and Six. Forest. And it is, of course, Red and Six. Kills our Sliver. Also, of course. Oh, play Mutavault. Play Predator Sliver. Yeah, this is a bit of the nightmare scenario. Now our opponent can probably just uh, kind of kill all of our stuff for free. Red and Six is really strong. Vern Catacombs, cracks it, Swamp, gets back a land with Ren and Six, opponent passes, leaving up their removals, um, in that case, how do we even do this, if we fire up and lose our land, it's pretty bad, well, yeah, fire up Mutavault, this is all we can really do, unfortunately, ugh, alright opponent, go to combat, attack Ren and Six, there's the bolt on our Muta Vault. Yep. Well, we hit Renin 6 to 1. We play Sliver Hive. We play Gale Rider Sliver. But the Renin 6 survives. Oh, man, that card's so insane against us. Opponent gets back a land. And Liliana the Last Hope, okay, takes up on Predator Sliver. Vern Catacombs. Opponent passing. I'll play Misty Rainforest. Crack Misty Rainforest. Get a overgrown tomb. Untapped. White red. This was a good draw. Cloud Treader is good. Play. Actually, uh, all right. First we play Mana Wef Sliver. Then we play Cloud Treader Sliver. Go to combat. Attack all the Planeswalkers. Oh! Planeswalker Wrath! Okay! Wow, that took a that took a turn. There's a temptation to go for our opponent's face, but I think we got to get rid of the planeswalkers. Hope our opponent's left with creatures, and now we have a legit clock. Whoa! Throw a run in six. Is this happening? Opponent four mana blood braid. What do they spin into? That's the question. It's a Liliana, which is good but not great. It can kill something, but uh, that's not the end of the world. 
Or I can make us discard Siphon Sliver. Ticks down. We will sack Mana Wef Sliver. All right. Sure. For Catacombs, opponent. No attacks. Well, we will play. Man, maybe we play everything. One, two, Mana Weft. One, two. Yeah. Play Mana Weft Sliver. Play Siphon Sliver. Go to combat. And opponent scoops it up? Whoo! Wow! Maybe this deck is the Jund Assassin. Our opponent had the turn two Ren and Six. It killed a Sliver. They had a Lightning Bolt to kill a Sliver. And we still won! Huh! Maybe this deck is just really good against Jund. <laughs> I, I'm not 100% sure why it would be really good against Jund. The Planeswalker seem insane against us, but uh, it worked. It worked, it worked. So, all right. Jund. Oh, my God. Frenetic Sliver. Gives us a 50% chance of dodging a removal spell. I mean, it's probably, it's probably worth it. We didn't bring it in last time in one, but we brought in Dredgescape, and Dredgescape didn't seem that good. Also interested in Diffusion Sliver. Let's go down Striking Sliver. Go down Spiteful Sliver. Huh, I guess First Sliver. We're sideboarding out First Sliver a lot, sadly. And Leeching Sliver? Let's try it like that. It's Frenetic's time to shine. <laughs> Ponets on the play. Um, ooh, hmm. Uh, this hand doesn't let us cast anything. It's good, but we can't actually cast anything. This is also very sketchy. Ugh. Uh-oh. Is our sliver ruck luck running out? Ooh, can we even go to five? Do we just have to keep this? All right, we're going to five. Ugh. We will keep. We will put... Oh, boy. Unsettled Mariner land to the bottom. Huh, well, not feeling super good about this one. Pwn it. Verd Catacobes. Cracks it. If they have a discard spell, we have just pretty much nothing happening on the Mold of Five. It's an Inquisition. There goes our Cloud Shredder. All right, Collected Company. If we get to it, it's all about you, baby. Bone it. Passes. Uh, Sedge Sliver. Well, that is a Sliver. Land go. Slivers is a deck, like most tribal decks, we kind of need a critical mass of cards. Stopping Grounds. Untap. 15. Ponet. Scavenge Goose. And passes. Well, Cavern. I mean, if we somehow get to the point where we cast two Collected Companies, that is a way we could get back into this and undo our mulligan. Bloodstained Mire. What's our opponent have? Uh, Liliana's pretty rough. Swamp. Liliana's gonna make it hard to ever get to the Collected Companies. Okay, just eats a Cloud Shredder for now. And runs out of Goyf. Yup, opponent. Gets in. Hits us. Well, let's see what we draw. We're down to 17. Opponent passes. It's a land. Well, play Sliver Hive. I think we have to Sedge Sliver. I think we gotta. Worst case, it probably distracts our opponent. Sedge Sliver, go. Well, we got the land for Coco. Opponent. Bloodstained Mire. Bolts our Sedge Sliver. Ew. Goes to combat. Gets in for a billion and a half. Uh-huh. Uh, this might just be too late now. Opponent passes. Vern Catacombs. Go. Yeah, well, we'll see. Opponent. Eats Sedge Sliver. Down to 16. Cracks Bloodstained Mire. Gets a Blood Crypt tapped. Untaps. Bloodstained Mire. Opponent. Goes attacking. We're just going to take it. Dead to a Bolt. Down to three. And they have the Bolt. All right. Um, well, we'll cast this. I don't think it does anything. Our chance of winning was to... End step collected company into collected company hitting like haste creatures and lords. And yep, fair enough. Well, mold of fives are rough. Mold of fives are, are pretty sketchy. Well, run it back. Run it back and hope for a little bit less mulliganing here on the play. All right, we get to play first. There are risks to a five color mana base, that's for sure. Opponent's turn to go to six. Um. Huh. Let's Verdant Catacombs crack it. Take, hmm, a little bit awkward. Um, so if we take a forest, we guarantee we can mana weft next turn. If we take a godless shrine and we draw five color land, it turns on all of our other stuff. All right, take a forest. Ugh. Play an ether vial, pass the turn. Mana is a little bit, a little bit clunky. 
When we don't hit all our five color lands, Bonnet. Inquisition. Gonna take a sliver, I presume. Takes Unsettled Mariner. Bonnet passes. Well, we get to take up our Vial. Play Overgrown Tomb. Run out Mana Weft. Pass the turn. Huh, all right. Come on, One Woods. Come on, One Woods. We need some Lords to speed up this clock. Bonnet. Tap land. And passes. Well, take up our Ether Vial. That is a Lord. So, I think we Ether Vial, put Cloud Shredder into play. Godless Shrine, untapped. Um, play Cloud Shredder number two. Play Predatory Sliver. Go to combat. Attack. I mean, our hand's empty, but we get in for six. That's something. Opponent to 14. Pass the turn. Bloodstain Mire for our opponent. Well, now we want Cocos and Lords. Cocos and Lords. That's all we want for the rest of the game. Overgrown Tomb, untapped to 11. Liliana. Okay. Takes up on Predator Sliver. Yeah. Opponent. Passes. We draw. Come on, Coco or Lord. Coco or Lord. Uh, do we take up to three? Yeah, let's go to three. It's a land. So we go to combat. Kill Liliana. Hit our opponent. Down to nine. Pass the turn. Hold on to the land as bait. Opponent untaps. This does mean we don't have lethal this turn. Maelstrom Paltz on our Cloud Shredders. All right. Coco or Lords. Coco or Lords. Vile. Staying on three. Oh, no. The Fizzle is on. Get in. Hit our opponent to five. Oh, we got off to such a good start. We got off to such a good start, but now it's all falling apart. We haven't been able to back it up with threats. Potent. Passing. We. Vile. Uh, stays on three. Takes up to one. Oh, no. Well, go to combat. Attack. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Assassin's Trophy. Our mana wef sliver. Well, we grab a swamp. Hit our opponent. Down to three. Play a watery grave. Pass the turn. Uh, opponent. What you got? Passing. We draw. Now we take up our vial. Stays on three. Goes up to two. Go to combat. Attack. Opponent goes to one. Do we even have fetchable lands left? One, two, three. We do not. Um, pass the turn. All right. Come on, opponent. Whiff, whiff, whiff. Whiff, whiff, whiff. Liliana. Oh, my God. Gets rid of our lord. Passes. Vials staying the same from now on. Come on, deck. Hmm. All right. Overgrown Tomb. That's a good draw. Coco is a good draw. We're going to wait. We could play it right now. We only have two Cloud Shredders left, though. So I think we're better off waiting and going for end step Coco. Opponent still doesn't have red mana. Ticks up. We discard a Verdant Catacombs that literally does nothing. Yup. Opponent discards Ren and Six. Catacombs. Adds mana but can't be cracked. Well, end of turn. Spin the wheel. Hope for some love. Collected Company. Dredge Cape Sliver. Frenetic Sliver. Ooh. Okay. Untap. Vile staying the same. An opponent cracks the fetch, gives up, and slivers, overcoming Jund again. Again. Jund, I don't know why. Red and Six seems so good against us. But we keep taking them down. Apparently, it's better than it looks somehow. I don't know how. I don't know why. Uh, we'll take it, though. Slivers, they're doing it. They're doing it. We could have done a really cute line here. I don't know if we would have done it. So, Frenetic Sliver, one of the weirdest slivers, allows you to pay zero, flip a coin. If you win the flip, you basically flicker wisp that sliver. Exiles comes back end step. If you lose the flip, you sacrifice it. So something we could have done, I don't know if we would have done it. We could have tried to flip Dredgescape Sliver, hoping to lose. And if we got it in the graveyard, then we could have unearthed uh, three more slivers with haste thanks to Cloud Shredder to attack. So we probably would have just attacked and hoped for the best. But it's kind of funny that we could have tried like a 50% chance to kill our own Dredgescape <laughs> to get back Cloud Shredders and win. But uh, we'll take it. Jund Assassins, the slivers are. So he's like, all right. Much brew about nothing time. We are slivering in modern and 
we're going to try this based almost exclusively on Collected Company. <laughs> okay. Oh, dear. Dismember is probably... Probably the last thing we wanted to draw. Uh, okay. Yeah, Dismember doesn't seem great against Tron. Okay, okay, okay. Ether Vial, go. So I guess what we're hoping for is like... Ugh. Hmm. Yeah, against Tron, I'm not sure. The Collected Companies do not seem like they might be fast enough here. We'll see. Hopefully our opponent stumbles around a bit. That's probably our best bet. Blast... Oh, is it Eldrazi Tron? If it's Eldrazi Tron, then I like this hand a little bit more. Vile Tiggin up. Sedge Sliver. Well, Godless Shrine. Untapped. Run out a Mana Web Sliver. And now we're hoping to draw land, basically. Land to start Coco ing Eldrazi Temple. Definitely Eldrazi Tron. That also makes our Dismember better. Well, things are looking up a little bit. Opponent. Thought not? Thought not, Seer. Well, there goes one of our collected companies, I assume. Gotta be collected company. Too risky for our opponent to let us double collected company. We still need to be aware about getting janked out by Karn, but I feel like if we can get enough slivers on the battlefield, we might be able to kind of go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with Eldrazi. Just stack up our Lord effects, and we might be able to get slivers that are just bigger and more evasive than what our opponent's got going on. Wow! Takes his member. Oh, give us a lad. Give us a lad. Please. Take up Vile. Oh, land would be so good. Vile to two. That's a land. All right. Overgrown tomb untapped. Uh, we will pass the turn. Hmm. I wonder if we should have main phased on the off chance of hitting haste slivers. There's probably an argument to main phasing there. Yeah, that might have been better. Another tower for our IP unit. Ew. Well, double thought not. That's a little more annoying. So now we're still going to lose a collected company. Yup. Opponent, no attacks. Well, spin the wheel. See what we hit. Be good to us, Coco. Be good to us, Coco. Collected company. Um, hmm. Let's go Cloud Shredder Predator. Put the rest to the bottom. Take up Vial. Ooh, ho, ho, ho. Okay. Alrighty then. Uh, Predator Sliver. Sedge Sliver. And uh, this is a lot of damage. Actually, that's, uh, that is 20. That is lethal. Uh, all right. Swing. I guess our opponent could dismember Cloud Shredder. That's the way this goes wrong. Otherwise, that is, that is the explosiveness of Slivers. No blocks, and, whoo, turn three thought not, turn four thought not, slivers don't care, 20 in the air, whoo, and that's what the deck can do when it, uh, when it gets going, it does its thing, whoo, oh, lordy, 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 all right, that was very good, very good, so opponents playing Eldrazi Tron, Death Touch seems like a good ability to have access to, um, Spiteful seems somewhat relevant. And then I kind of want Harmonic. I wonder if Harmonic's worth it. The Protection Slivers seem less important, like the Unsettled Mariners. Maybe we go down Unsettled Mariners, Venom Spiteful, go down something for Harmonic. The question is what? Maybe like go down Dredgescape for Harmonic. Maybe we just cut all the Unsettled Mariners. All right, run it like that. <laughs> Ooh, slivers! Man, the good turns are pretty good. That was a very shocking amount of damage. Well, man and lords, man and lords, we will keep it. All right, opponent. Let's see if he can tron us. Urza's mine. And passes. That's another lord. Uh, well, land, sliver. Go. Er, ooh, Urza's tower. Mind stone. All right. Well, mutavault. And predatory sliver. See what our opponent has. If they have the Tron land, this gets frightening. All right. Not the right Tron land. Pwn it. Runs out. A. Walking Ballista. Yup. Pings. And pings. Well, all right. Lord one down. Pwn it passes. Um, hmm. So I think we have to Misty. Crack it. Grab Overgrow Tomb. Untapped. And let's just Sedge Sliver. Use our mana. Next turn, we can play two two drops. Sedge Sliver, go. No Tron land. No Tron land. No Tron land. <laughs> Opponent. Eldrazi Temple. And 
One, two, three, four, five. Ooh, that's interesting. I'll play Sliver Hive. One, two, three, four, five. How much should we be worried about all is dust is the question. We would like to just get frisky, but maybe that's too risky. Let's play, hmm, play Mana Web Sliver. Actually, maybe we just play, yeah, we gotta use our mana. Play Mana Web Sliver. Play Predator Sliver. Go to combat, get in for four. I am a little frightened of all is dust. Opponent down to 16. All right, no Tron land, no all is dust. No Tron land, no all is dust. No Tron land, no all is dust. What do you got, opponent? Another mine. Oh, they do have all is dust. Well, that's unfortunate. Opponent passes. Now, Godless Shrine, untapped. Run out, Harmonic Sliver. Kill the Mind Stone. Yeah, that was one of the cards we were definitely worried about. Blow up the Mind Stone. Play... Mana Wef Sliver. Pass the turn. What does our opponent as is the follow-up? Yeah, we can't even regenerate through all his dust since it's a sacrifice effect. I mean, we still have a clock if nothing goes wrong. Sedge Sliver is a lord. We have this Mute Vault. Still drawing very live to Collected Company. Collected Company is still a really good draw. Blast soon. Opponent. Passes. Sliver Hive. So... I think we play Sliver Hive, play Sedge Sliver, Mute Vault, go to combat, attack, hit our opponent for a bunch, down to nine, pass the turd, okay, what do you got opponent? Gonna take up the Blast Zone to three, sure. We can regenerate our Sedge Sliver though, so this isn't, isn't as devastating as it might look. Another all is dust is the scariest card. Opponent untaps. Tronland is still also scary, just because of the amount of mana. Opponent, they get it over. Can the Blast Zone protect our opponent enough? So Sliver Hive is five mana to make a Sliver. It is something, though. If we just, like, draw useless land, worst case, we can make a 1-1, one, one, which is kind of a 2-2. Two, two. Man, that's one of the sweetest Sliver arts. Sedge Sliver looks really cool. I've never looked at that up close. Well, all right, opponent. What you got, what you got. They can't really go Karn locking because of our board. And the Harmonic Sliver actually protects us from something like Ensnaring Bridge for the most part. Oh, opponent drew it. All right. Well, Tron is officially going to be assembled. So our opponent is officially going to have all the mana. And we don't really have a way to get rid of a land. So opponent's going to have Tron the rest of the game. Opponent really thinking about their lines here. Wow, all right, expedition map. Sacking, or tapping the blast though. So opponent has all the mana. Three cards in hand, essentially infinite mana, nine mana. What's the follow up? Karn, okay. What does Karn get? Ticks down, four. Walking Ballista, okay. Ballista X2. I don't know if that's all that good though. So opponent Ballista's. Well, let's see what we draw. We untap. Ooh, Spiteful Sliver. That's very interesting. So, we will run out Spiteful Sliver. Step one. Is this lethal? I think we're just short, right? So, Spiteful Sliver comes down. And Apollo scoops it up? Oh, Spiteful Sliver coming through, taking down Eldrazi Tron. And maybe Slivers is like... A good deck. Lurking beneath the surface of modern. Now that things are a little bit more fair, I mean, we did get dredged out, but Jund and Eldrazi Tron, we are taking down some of the titans of the modern format. <laughs> With Spiteful Sliver and friends. All right. Ah, sweet. Sweet, sweet. All right. Much brew about nothing time. We are Slytherin, or <laughs> actually Slytherin in modern and sand actually looks good no one drops no ether vials but we have a coco we got two lords and a mana weft yeah seems reasonable see what our opponent is up to we are on the draw so we'll see see how fast of a start our opponent has Ooh, all right tron yeah, all right uh now i'm scared eldrazi trod didn't feel bad but tron trod is very scary 
They just have so many sweepers. Opponent. Turn three Tron, of course. That is the way of the London Mall. Well, we'll grab a Overgrow too. I think our fun might be coming to an end. Eh, okay. Sliver. <laughs> on our... <laughs> on our, uh... Cavern of Souls. Bam, Mana Web Sliver. Opponent gonna have seven mana. We're trying to wrap two. Mana Web Sliver is like our Tron land, but not quite as good. <laughs> Opponent gets a missing Tron piece. Uh -huh. Untaps four cards in hand. Are any of them relevant? If they are, we're in a lot of trouble. There's the Urza's Mine. And what's a follow up? Do you have a card? A Wonky Ballista, a Worm Coil Legend, something equally horrible and depressing. Let's see it, Mr. and Mrs. Tron. Looks like a card. That's seven mana. Oh, it's a Ballista. Ugh. Oh, it's a Worm Coil. Okay. All of those things are still really bad for us. It's a Worm Coil. And also a Dismember. Oh, boy. Yup. Well, uh-huh. Sure. Hooray. Yup. Uh, we will run out a... Does it even matter? Let's play... You know what? I think we shock ourselves. Play Godless Shrine. <laughs> we will match our opponent's turn three... Turn three Worm Coil with a Sedge Sliver. Go. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, that was a rough turn. Bought it. This is a matchup where I think maybe necro Necrotic Sliver in the sideboard could be good. It's probably it's probably too slow in general, but we don't really have... One thing we've learned during this league is while the deck is sweet, because of our all-sliver sideboard plan, we didn't really have anything for Dredge, and while we took down Eldrazi Tron just by being a better creature deck, we don't really have much for traditional Tron where they can just assemble Tron basically every game on turn three so those are things to consider maybe the sideboard maybe it doesn't have to be a hundred percent slivers maybe it's like 80 percent slivers and then like graveyard hate and tron hate just to shore up some of the the rougher matchups but the deck has had a super impressive clock like we've been killing people quickly pretty consistently when we run into trouble is when our opponent can just kill even more quickly. Opponent. Up to nine mana here on turn four. Oblivion Stone. And counter on the Worm Coil. And Chromatic Sphere. And Cracks Chromatic Sphere. Well, Verdant Catacombs. Play... Cloud Shredder Sliver, I guess? <laughs> Go to combat. Attack. So we had our opponent for five, but there's still an Oblivion Stone and still a Worm Coil. Opponent, back down to 17. Untaps. Combat. Hits us. Gain six. Undoes our last attack. We go to five. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. And opponent, thinking about casting something, deciding against it? I guess they want to leave up Oblivion Stone. <laughs> Karn the Great Creator. All right, things keep getting worse. Tutors, four, Mycosynth Lattice. Well, crack catacombs, watery grave, tapped. Untap, go to combat, attack Karn. Karn dies, pass the turn. All right, Oblivion Stone, rass our board. So we can collect a company to try to stay alive. <laughs> I don't know if there if that actually does much. We'll do it. We'll keep fighting the good fight. No early scoops. That's the new rule. So we're gonna fight the fight, but I don't know if we can win the war. Collect a company. Leeching sliver, predator sliver, everything else to the bottom, which yeah, it's fine. We didn't want most of that anyway. Chump block with leeching sliver. Opponent goes up to twenty-nine. Still has Tron, of course. It's a little sad that our opponent's four lands make nine mana and ours make Ours make, oh, all right, big Karn. Okay, now it's not an early scoop. We can officially, we can officially call it now. Oh my God. All right, is there anything? Diffusion Sliver, not good against Rod. Dredge Cape, no. Legion Sliver, not really. Spiteful Sliver, nah. Two-headed Sliver, nope. Venom Sliver, no. Frenetic Sliver, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> not really though. Um, I guess it's probably like, Alright, harmonic and frenetic. I don't think this is a good plan. 
<laughs> I don't think this is a good plan against Rod, but it is a plan that, like, theoretically could work. Are we gonna... I think we're gonna cut Vile's. Run it like that. Vile gets shut down by card. Ugh. Well, we took down Eldrazi Tron. So at least we can hang our head on that. And it shows that we can beat decks that play Tron lands. All right, here we come. This is a decent a decent curve of slivers. Is it a curve of slivers that beats Karn on turn three? That's a real question. Less confident there. Opponent going to six to guarantee the turn three Tron. Uh, so we will just... Uh, we actually kind of want to land, I think. Forest, go. Uh, opponent, forest. Ooh, no turn three Tron. Opponent, 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 opponent. What's going on over there? Urz is mine. Yep. And passes. Well, sliver hive. And sinew sliver. Sliver number one, get our clock going. I mean, I guess our path to victory is hope our opponent stumbles and just be as fast as possible. I think that's our our main goal. Opponent. Ancient Stirrings Part 2. Yep. Goes digging. Finds. Expedition map. All right, so Tron on turn four by the looks. Power plant for our opponent. And dismember. Sure. Opponent passes. You. That's tough. That's really tough. So... Misty Rainforest, crack Misty Rainforest. Grab a Overgrown Tomb, untapped. Run out, run out Sedge Sliver. We're stacking up the Lords. Opponent did have to take four to dismember. Sedge Sliver, go. Next turn we can do something like Mana, Cloud Shredder Mana Left, something like that. It's, it's a little painful because then we're tapping our clock. Uh, if our opponent doesn't have a wrath, we might have a shot. Urza's mine. We knew about that. We know there's a expedition map to find Urza's tower. There it is. Map and passes. Well, Cavern of Souls on Sliver. Go to combat. Attack. Since we drew Collected Company, I think we just get in, hit our opponent. End of turn, we can Collected Company and. Pray to the Sliver Gods. Bone it. Crags map. All right. What do they get with their eight mana? Urza's Tower. Nice and mismatched. <laughs> Bone it. Tron. Assembled. Well, at least it will be momentarily. There it is. Tron. And Karn. The Great Creator. Tutors for an artifact. Well, depending on what this artifact is... There is some chance that Collected Company untap Cloud Shredder plus something is lethal. Maybe. Maybe. That is the power of the Cloud Shredder, is to win the game out of nowhere. Opponent was a turn late on Tron. We'll see. We'll see what they find and how good it is. It's Oblivion Stone. Oh. Okay. Okay. So we just have to deal 13. Oh, don't betray us, Coco. Don't betray us. Don't betray us. Be good. Collected Company. Ugh. So, Unsettled Mariner, Mana Wef Sliver. Everything else to the bottom. We untap for Netic Sliver. So we have, let's see, three, three, six. Oh, are we going to get it? All right. So, tap, tap, Cloud Shredder Sliver. Everything haste. And then, Sedge Sliver? Is this enough? I think it's just enough. Lord number two. With haste, thanks to Cloud Shredder. And Cloud Shredder really changes this deck. It is so good in this deck. Attack our opponent. 4, 8, 12, 15 points of damage. Turn 4 Tron. Not Tronny enough in Sliverville. And opponent scoops it up. All right. All right. All right. All right. This is, uh, this is it. For the 4 1 with Slivers. This is the time when we want Tron to like mold to 3. Fingers crossed. We know we got a fast clock. We can kill like on turn four. We're going to be on the draw. We need a little stumble and a bubble in from our Tron opponent to get the win. Ooh. Well, maybe uh, it's going to be Slivers that are stumbling and bumbling. This hand, not going to do it. Zero lands. Opponent, ugh, keep seven. 
One land also does not seem super good. Oh boy. Oh no. Oh, both black sources. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. Oh, only a black source. All right. Well, oh, okay. Molda, Molda three. Uh, you go to the bottom. You go to the bottom. You go to the bottom. And you go to the bottom. All right, Tron. Can you beat? <laughs> oh, man, a whip sliver. <laughs> well, those were some bad hands all the way down the curve. I think maybe there's an argument for keeping the six. But we kind of saw... I mean, I guess it's good that this happened. We probably were going to beat Tron anyway, but... um. It, it's good to see the drawbacks of the deck. If it's a deck you're thinking of putting together, and one of the drawbacks of Slivers is, uh, if you don't hit the five-color lands, or like a mana web sliver, the mana's pretty questionable. And that was an example where we did have some hands where we just didn't have enough lands in an absolute sense. But then we had like two lands, but our basic swamp and our Urborg, which are two one of mono black sources. That's something that probably happens, I don't even know, one in a thousand games or something. But if you play the deck a lot, that's gonna happen. So I guess it's good to see it's good to see the drawback to go along with the the upsides. Bought it. Gets a chromatic sphere. Less scary than a Tron land. But they have a Tron land and a chromatic sphere. Alright, mana weft, you could do it. The little sliver that could. <laughs> sliver hive. <laughs> Uh, Mana Web Sliver, one of our three cards in our opening hand. And go, Tron. Don't do anything scary, please. Uh, opponent. Cracks, green mana. I wonder if Once Upon a Time will make it in Tron. It seems worse than Sylvan's crying to me. Like, imagine imagine we were paying modern post throne of Valderain, and uh, our opponent wanted to put together Tron, because we obviously wouldn't be playing Tron, so our opponent wanted to put together Tron. So if it's is just get trod, I think that's way better than look at the top five, like another Ancient Stirrings that doesn't even hit Karn or Ugin. So I, I don't know. That's my take. I would be, if our opponent played Once Upon a Time there instead of Sylvan Scrying, I would be celebrating a slight victory. Obviously not a victory victory because we're on three cards against Tron and they have turned three Tron, but I would be feeling a little bit better about our chances. From like 0.5% to like 0.7% or something. Bonet, cracks, green, and ancient stirrings. All right, bonet passes. Well, here comes the beats opponent. Look out, <laughs> look, look out. That's an overgrown tomb. We are going to run out one of our remaining cards. <laughs> Set sliver. And uh, here we come, take two. <laughs> oh, this hand, bonet, 18. All right, so we got five power in the battlefield. We need our opponent to have seven cards in hand, Tron, and do nothing for four turns or so. All right, turn number one of doing nothing. Maybe maybe our opponent has all Tron lands, and they just have like 30 mana, but nothing to, to put into play with it, nothing scary. It's not impossible. It's not impossible. It could happen. Opponent. Well, Tron land. See, it's coming true. <laughs> and nothing. Ship the turn. Six more Tron lands. Uh-oh. That looks like something. Karn. Yeah, all right. Karn. What you gonna do? Exiles. Sedge Sliver. Yeah. Well, now we're on an 18 turn clock. I guess Sinew Sliver technically picks it up. Very slightly. Sinew Sliver. Sliver Hive. Combat. Man, this doesn't even... Karn just gained so much loyalty. The plus four. Like, we get Karn down to one, but then it just goes all the way back up to five. Ugh. This is... No early scoops. No early scoops. <laughs> Found it. Seven mana. Nine mana. Eleven mana. It's a lot of mana. Ulamog. All right. Uh, now it's not an early scoop. Our deck doesn't even have a way to kill an Ulamog, so uh, that's, a, that's a guaranteed kill. Well... We finished with a winning record with Slivers. We got a chest to open. The kids are eating. And the deck was sweet. I do think it could use some improvements in the sideboard. Uh, we talked about it a little bit in the matches, but I don't think the sideboard has to be only Slivers. I like some of the Slivers. Uh, not sure about three frenetic Slivers, especially with two defuse. We have, if you look at the Sliver sideboard, we essentially have five Slivers that protect our Slivers. Then we have uh, a handful of slivers that help with combat. Then we have, I guess, Dredgescape Sliver is kind of just a weird protection sliver. A couple of random life gain slivers. 
a leeching sliver, harmonic sliver. It's all stuff that is primarily good against fair decks. It's stuff that it's helping us win combat against creatures. It's helping us uh, get back stuff after John like thought season or gives us stuff. All stuff to help with fair decks for the most part. I think that the easiest thing, and this is we're getting into wraps up stuff. We're gonna have to crack our treasure chest, but I think the easiest way to improve the deck. I actually like the main deck. I don't know if it really needs first sliver. We never actually drew it, but the main deck worked really well. I think we need stuff to fight the unfair decks in the sideboard to fight Tron, to fight Storm, uh, to fight Dredge. So, like, we need to cut some of our sideboard slivers, which are making our deck better in our good matchups. Like, we're already, as we saw, we crushed Jun, we beat Eldrazi Tron, we beat Jun again. Uh, we're already good at winning the fair matchups. We just get a million lords. That's what slivers does better than anyone. Their competitive advantage is just an infinite number of slivers. So I feel like we already win the fair matchups with slivers for the most part. We could still use, like, a little more protection that's fine i'm not against like a couple diffusion slivers or the dredge scape or whatever but i feel like we need to cut some of the other slivers that are good in fair matchups to help our bad matchups uh with stuff against trod with dredge etc 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 otherwise i mean the deck was sweet it was a fast clock slivers are a, a hilarious way to win we beat Judd twice we even beat Jun where they went turn two red and six turn three Liliata which is insane we beat a bunch of Liliata the last hopes we took down Eldrazi Tron because slivers just better than Eldrazi apparently so basically crush the fair decks lost to the unfair decks need to improve the unfair matchup in our sideboard and I guess we just kind of did our wrap up uh, right now because I was thinking of it. So, uh, that's a wrap up. That's a wrap up for today. However, our wrap up, wrap up, wrap up is cracking one treasure chest, our one and only, our sliver chest. What will wizards reward us with for going three and one with slivers? We are about to find out right now. Chest one of one we get. Ooh, Graven, Predator, uh, Predator Captain. I mean, it is a cool card. Our, one of our most hateful commanders. Uh, Grieven, is it worth anything is the question. It is worth, eh, about $3, I guess I lied. So, not bad. Chest is like $2.50, so we come out ahead and get a good card for our commander collection. Slate of Ancestry, I don't know if I've ever played this. I could see playing it in, like, a creature-heavy commander deck, maybe, but, uh, like, elf commander or something, but I don't think I've ever actually played it. And the play points, so, well, not a bad chest. We came out a little bit ahead chest-wise, and, uh, that's about slivers. That's our wrap-up. We did the easy wrap-up. Main deck good. Crushes fair decks. Need more sideboard stuff for unfair decks. That is slivers for modern. They are awesome. The modern horizons additions. Super helpful. Spiteful sliver helped us steal a game. Uh, especially Cloud Shredder. That's the biggest, baddest addition. Oh, my God. We had, like, two or three wins, I think, where Cloud Shredder coming down by surprise and giving our other stuff haste was able to get in lethal damage and steal the win. And Unsettled Mariner... That does help a little bit against unfair decks. I don't know if that's enough, but it does keep our opponent from, like, targeting us with stuff, which is helpful. Uh, it didn't do a ton in our matchups, but it's fine. I think it's a good new addition. Dredgecape, we had that one game where it was almost hilariously effective, but it was just, like, a fine sliver as well. So, overall, sliver sweet. Need more sideboard stuff. Don't play all slivers in the sideboard. Add in some Trod hate. Add in some Graveyard hate to fight against Dredge. Maybe some Dapping Spheres to fight against Orb. And that deck should be even better, because based on our experience, it's Jund, doesn't really got a chance. Aldrazi Tron, move over. Sliver's coming through. It's the unfair deck that's our problem. So, anyway, that's better much of brew for this week. Slivers for modern. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, Check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.